Should you be investing in a way that uh, reflects your values of what is considered environmental, social, or governance investing? All right. So we're talking about socially responsible investing, and we want to know if we should may maybe consider <clears throat> ESG investing, and we want to know if it's something that um, that should become a part of our portfolios. Is it is is ESG or socially responsible investing worth it? Is it a good way to go? Is it the investment of the future, so to speak? Or is this just a, a niche asset class that's really uh, all it's ever going to be? And maybe it's just a, a marketing ploy uh, that's put out by the fund companies in order to uh, sell more funds to people and maybe to really focus on uh, millennial investors who are a key group in leading the charge for socially responsible and uh, ESG investment. You know, I definition of ESG is environmental, social, and governance. Uh, it refers to the three central factors in measuring sustainability and ethical impact of an investment in a company or business. And these criteria uh, help to better determine the future financial performance of companies and return risk. No guarantees, of course. And let's take a look at, for example, the uh, ESGU, that's an iShares fund, okay? And one thing I want, to, I want to point out in this fund is that the top 10 holdings, okay, in this fund include um, stocks such as Microsoft, uh, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, parent of Google. So what, I'm, uh, as you see the screen here, I'm looking at it on my other screen, okay? And what you're seeing are just the same old, same old super large cap stocks that you would find in the S&P 500 index and most of the other major indices. So just a quick note, you cannot actually invest directly into an index, but you could invest in an ETF or mutual fund or other product that uh, mimics, attracts an index. Just want to get that disclaimer out there. And um, then if you, you take a look at some of the other uh, type of funds out there, the good news is that if a client truly demands that they are in a portfolio of ESG and social responsibility investments, it can be done as long as the client is willing to accept um, certain risks. And I think that the main risk that a client would have to accept is <clears throat> concentration risk. So that brings me to diversification. So diversification is a method that we use to uh, mitigate or to lower risk. And it will not actually protect your portfolio from going down in a generally down market. But if you're going to invest in 100 stocks and if you go bust, you'll be okay again as the diversification kicks in, just to give you an example. If you take a look at the product, another ETF, just as an example, these are not recommendations and prices of these ETFs and their underlying securities are certainly uh, subject to market fluctuation, is what you're going to see is it has a lot of the same top 10 holdings. Um, but both of them use a different benchmark. Uh, the one from iShares that I just showed you before uses the uh, ESG, uh, which and is tracked by uh, MSCI. I'll show you something about that in a moment. This one uses a different benchmark, which is sponsored by the United Nations. Okay, and here we go. And it's doing pretty good. It's up over 20% on the year. And you'd say, well, that, that's pretty good. That's actually uh, above and beyond the S&P 500 this year. Does this, is it mean... For all time. I'm just saying year to date. But if you take a look at the profile, you'll, you'll wind up taking a look at a lot of the um, same stocks. If you take a look at these, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but I'll tell you it's Microsoft, it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's Facebook, there's Alphabet, and there's some JP Morgan and Visa and Procter and Gamble. So what you wind up doing is you're winding up with a lot of the same stocks. And I don't really know if that's actually benefiting you in terms of um, making uh, socially responsible and ESG investing a, um, a, a smart move or not. So what you wind up getting is a portfolio that is 
a lot more concentrated into certain sectors of the market. So in this case where technology has been leading the way as a sector for the last 10 years um, in this bull run we're in, it makes sense that a portfolio with a heavy concentration of technology is going to do uh, very well. So, but if you take a look at um, this one here, so maybe uh, clean tech is something uh, that we should be looking at, or maybe we need to look at e ETFs that really go into how you, um, you know, value human rights, uh, our companies putting more women on the board, our companies uh, supportive of LGBT. But here's one, a company, an ETF that focuses on women's investing, okay? Um, and women's empowerment. <clears throat> and this is up over 20% for the year. And it's it's doing very, it's doing very well. They're very similar. Here we go. Should be, yeah, here we go again. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, JP Morgan, and there's some Johnson and Johnson and Intel. But you may see a recurring theme. I mean, just six percent of the fund alone is in Microsoft, and Apple is over five percent, Amazon's over five percent. So what you're doing is by investing in a theme that's important to you, it makes sense that you're investing in companies that are um, you know, focused on these kinds of areas that treat people well. And I'm but PRID from Insight Shares, LGBT, employment, equality, ETF. And to me, this is a great theme and definitely a, a theme that <clears throat> I think should be supported. But again, we're talking about, is this really ideal as um, an investment? The point of this, though, is that, well, here they come again. Look, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, JP Morgan, Alphabet, a little Johnson & Johnson, there's some Visa, which we saw in another one, and Walmart. So do you see the recurring theme here over and over and over? But if you just take a look at now at the, um, let's take a look at um, an S&P 500 fund. And then after this, I'm going to move away from looking at individual ETFs. Uh, like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, a little Berkshire, but there's Johnson & Johnson again, JP Morgan again. Alphabet again, and there's uh, Exxon Mobil. Uh, you're not going to really find Exxon Mobil in too many um, ESG and socially responsible funds and energy companies. Okay, pollution and all that. But do you see the pattern here? You keep winding up with a lot of similar stocks, and the S P is about 21% tech. Um, well, these other ETFs are typically 25, 26% tech. So the reason they're doing well lately is just because they're overexposed compared to the S&P 500 in the tech sector, which happens to be a sector that has truly embraced ESG and socially responsible investing. Uh, but that creates concentration risk. So if the tech sector in the stock market takes a big dive, not only uh, Will that help to bring your portfolio down in terms of performance, but it would have an exaggerated impact on your overall portfolio because you're so overexposed to the tech sector. So that's the big risk in, in all of these. Okay, so article after article kept citing this study. So I found the study and um, it's an exhaustive study. And it came out only uh, a couple of months ago. So it's a very recent study. And what the author did Okay, I highlighted a couple of things. Let me let me pull this out for you and show you this. Okay, really? So you came out May of 2019. Okay, and I've, I've highlighted the parts that I need to uh, show you. Okay, um, they, they studied 30, but of, of 18 funds examined that had a full 10 year track record. So these are the long term ones. Okay, $10,000 ESG portfolio equally divided across the funds, blah, blah, blah. It, um, it underperformed by a pretty healthy amount. Average expense ratio was higher, and uh, they they really, they, did, they just didn't, as a group, they didn't measure up, okay? Um, further, only one of the 18 funds that they looked at was able to exceed the earnings of an S&P 500 benchmark over a five-year time horizon, and only two of the 18 funds were able to, to beat um, the S&P over a 10-year time horizon. So, um, that, that's the problem. It sounds like a great idea. Funds, you know, investing for the future and companies that take care of people and planet Earth. But from strictly a numbers point of view, um, I'm not buying the uh, ESG 
argument. So I'm going to highlight this. These are the uh, ETFs. And some of these are the ones that we just looked at a little while ago. Again, these are for informational purposes as just examples. But And then we take a look at, you know, the uh, the top 10 holdings. And, you know, here's the benchmark of Microsoft, Facebook, Alphabet. You, you, wherever you look, you keep seeing, you know, more tech, Salesforce is tech, JP Morgan, Visa. We saw that a couple of times. Facebook again. Okay. So wherever you look, you're starting to see the same companies. That's why I'm not overly uh, sold on the idea and it's very hard to invest in these and avoid becoming over concentrated in uh in the tech sector especially in the, in the same tech stocks not just tech in general as time goes on and as more and more companies not just the tech sector but more and more companies move in this direction you're going to start seeing a lot of redundancies in the esg uh, sri space so i'm thinking that you are already on your way. Even if you're not invested uh, specifically for ESG, you're already exposed to it because of the exposure of the stock market. ESG investing overall is if you want to feel good about your investing, go with ESG. If it's the only way that you're going to stay um, invested in the stock market is by investing socially responsible in ESG, then this is fine. Then, then, then go for it. If this is how you have to do it. Um, for the rest of us, I don't think it's really necessary to go with ESG, and I think you're already getting exposure to ESG with most likely with your current investments. That's about it. Thanks. I'm going to end this broadcast because it's really hot in my office, and these, uh, this headset is uh, really starting to make me uh, boil, and I'm going to a charity event right now, which is the reason for the, uh, for the tie. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks again.